Hello, this is White Wolf here at Ways of the Wild Institute in Vermont. And the uh, short little video clip I'm going to do here is on the plant that you just uh, took a look at. It's called Indian Pipe. It's a, uh, a very unique plant. Um, one of the most uh, unique plants in the uh, eastern United States that, uh, that I can think of. And so I thought I'd do a uh, a little clip on it because most people uh, that are familiar with Indian pipe are unfamiliar with, uh, with its actual native uses. And so we're going to cover a little bit about uh, what exactly the plant is and uh, how it's been used traditionally by native people of this, uh, of this country. Uh, is its most uh, common name, however it's also been called the, uh, the corpse plant, uh, ghost plant. Now you'll notice it is white. It's not green like other plants, all right? Contrary to popular belief, this is not a fungus. This is a wild flower. But this wild flower cannot make chlorophyll on its own. Actually, it can't make chlorophyll at all, which is why it's white. All right, it's all bleached out. Now, this plant rarely grows more than 10 inches tall. Um, I mean, you can find it 10 inches tall, but uh, its average height really depends on your location. Uh, its average height seems to be about uh, six to eight inches. And you'll notice that on the, uh, the stems, the nodding stems, you'll see those black flecks. If the plant is touched, all right, it's a very fragile plant. If the plant is touched, it'll actually turn mushy. Uh, it'll kinda, it dissolves very fast. And uh, if you pick it, or as it ages, it will turn black. So when it dries, it turns black. It doesn't hold that color, that nice white color. And the Indian pipe grows, um, boy, quite a few places. I mean, all the way throughout the Appalachian Range, you can find Indian pipe. Uh, I found it growing, boy, as far out as the Mississippi. The key is what it likes to eat as to where it grows, all right? First, let's take a look here. You'll notice that these are nodding flowers, okay, on these rubbery stems. And if you look inside, you'll see it does have the pollen, all right? This is a very, um, um, very good food source for uh, honeybees, bumblebees, most bees and a lot of uh, even flies and things love to eat the pollen that's inside here or collect it. Now, the Indian pipe, what it does, since it cannot gain chlorophyll or create chlorophyll, it does not use the sunlight. This can grow in the dark. What it does do is it feeds off the root systems of other fungus or trees. Um, Another name for this is bird's nest because the, uh, the root system is uh, it's kind of like a, a cobweb. It's very fine. I'm not going to dig these up because it is a very fragile plant and it will kill it. But it's a very, fra uh, very frail cobweb dense cluster of fine thread roots like a bird's nest. And those roots tap in to the, uh, the very fine outer roots of fungus and also specific trees and it gains the nutrients by feeding off of the fungus or tree nutrients. So the trees and fungus end up gathering nutrients from the soil and the Indian pipe comes along and then taps them for its own food source. Here's a very young one just coming out of the ground. Now it does tend to like specific trees. Uh, the American beech the white pine, those are two key trees that it really enjoys. However, it also really likes to hang around hemlocks. And this you will only find growing in nice, shady, thick areas of the forest. Thick as in ground cover. It loves the dead soil built up around it, the leaves, all the compost of the forest great food sources for the Indian pipe. Now this is Indian pipe from last year that survived the snow. Of course it's dead, but this is what it turns into. 
Notice how tall these are in comparison to the other ones. But it turns into these dead black stalks and it gets these little pods up on top. This is old Indian pipe. Now yes, the, uh, the Indian pipe is not a fungus, it is a wildflower, but it is a parasite because it does not create its own food. It does not gather its own food from the soil, it steals its food from other plants. Now these little white flowers on the Indian pipe, they normally come out from uh, June, um, boy, all the way through October. Though here in the North Country, you normally don't see the Indian pipe come out until July, and then it's usually gone by September. But the further south you go in the Appalachian Range, the longer of a flowering time frame the Indian pipe has. Now traditionally, this plant has been used to uh, help rid the skin of uh, warts and uh, bunions. Uh, they use the juice. Uh, natives, they used to use the, uh, um, the gooey juice of the, uh, the plant itself. Remember these things kind of uh, melt? when you touch them they kind of disintegrate well that juice is what they used to just apply directly to warts to uh, get rid of them but the uh, the tea of the white part of the plant has been used um, quite a bit in the past for uh, colds and flus specifically to get rid of pain from colds and flus not so much to get rid of the cold itself but to assist with the pain um, the roots they have also been used uh, to make tea in the past um, as a sedative, uh, a non-addictive sedative, also to help with uh, pain, uh, irritability, restlessness, things like that. Now the plant does contain, uh, contain a, a number of uh, glycosides, which um, uh, can build up in the system. They are uh, poisonous in large doses. So this is a uh, more of a medicinal plant like mistletoe. You use it sparingly. You do not need a lot of it. The juice of the plant also is an antibacterial, and so it was used for that as well. The tea could be used as a wash on uh, cuts, burns, things like that. Things where infection needed to be checked and taken care of. So the plant itself has uh, numerous uses, but again, use it sparingly and the Indian pipe is quite rare okay so it is not a good idea to just go out there and harvest this plant use it only if you absolutely need it and use it in small doses it is best if you know exactly what you're doing dose wise All right? it's not going to kill you but it's not very healthy for you if you take too much especially at the wrong time of year a little bit about the uh, Indian pipe, um, again also known as a bird's nest, uh, corpse plant, ghost plant. Uh, I've even heard it referred to as uh, ice plant because it uh, has a tendency to um, melt when handled. Okay, kind of like snow, and it also looks like snow. Little uh, patches of snow out here in the uh, the dark hemlock forest, pine forests, and uh, even the beech forest where the ground cover is a bit lighter. Come out here on a rainy day where it's heavy cloud cover and uh, that plant really stands out. This is White Wolf up here at Ways of the Wild Institute in Vermont. If you're interested in anything else that we do, check out the website, waysofthewildinstitute.com. Got lots of workshops, classes, learning CDs, tons of videos to check out on the, uh, the YouTube channel. Join me on Facebook. I've got a Facebook page for myself as well as the Institute. Lula Mollison, be well and happy.